Horses, we all love them, and some people love them a little too much. But while you may think you know just how beautiful, majestic, and wonderful horses can be, there are some even more stunning horses you might know nothing about. Until today, these are the most incredible horse breeds in the world. Number 15. The Belgian Horse Breed If you need a really big horse, then the Belgian is the best you can get. These mighty creatures originated from the small European country of Belgium, but were developed into the modern breed in the USA. Belgian Horse is the most popular breed of draft horse, which is another way of saying workhorse. They're strong and docile, and that makes them such good workers. Now, if you've ever taken a horse-drawn ride down Disney's Main Street, USA, then likely that carriage was pulled by a Belgian horse. These hefty workers are also used to pull plows, heavy logging work, and as well as sleighs and carriages. Belgian horses are also world record holders. The Belgian, going by the name of Big Jake, holds the current record as being the tallest horse in the world. He's a long-legged 20 hands high and two and three quarter inches. Horses are measured by a system of hands, with one hand being equal to four inches. So, doing the math, that, mm, let's see the numbers and carry the one, Big Jake's over two meters tall. The title of most expensive draft horse that ever was purchased is still held by a Belgian breed named Mickelrath's Captain Jim, selling for $112,500 in 2003. A stable investment, perhaps? Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. In this stunning footage, you can see the Appaloosa breed in action, truly one of the most incredible horse breeds to exist. They're most famous for their distinctively patterned coat, which gives them a spotted pattern similar to that of a leopard. This is rare among horses and has been dubbed the Leopard Complex. Other core characteristics of the Appaloosa breed include a visible white sclera, striped hooves, and mottled skin. Some of these characteristics can be seen in other breeds, but the combination of them all is a rarity exclusive to the Appaloosa. It makes them truly stunning animals. Comment down below with the hashtag SweetTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 14. The Shire Horse Breed these are horses that look like they're wearing fluffy leg warmers. Beautiful Shire horses originate from Britain, where they've been part of country life going back to medieval times. It's believed that the Shire horse may be descended from the legendary Great Horse of British history. Famous for being used in big battles of the past, warrior skills as well as superior strength. Before the technological transformation of farming in the UK, Shire horses really did pull their weight and a whole lot else. They were used mostly for heavy pulling work, like plowing and logging, delivering goods, as well as lugging great weights of coal in wagons across the country. They're perhaps most famous for being the horse of choice to pull carts loaded with huge barrels of ale from the brewery to the pubs. And there are many depictions of the Shire horse doing just that in paintings in the 19th century. Well, that's a useful horse. Number 13. The Clydesdale Breed During the First World War, many breeds of horses were being used by troops in horrific conditions in the trenches and battlefields across the Western Front. More than 8 million horses, ponies, and mules actually died during World War I. The Clydesdale Heavy Horse breed, which was used to haul huge artillery guns, suffered the most dreadful casualties on battlefields. More of these magnificent beasts of burden would lose their lives than any other horse breed in the conflict. This extraordinary breed of horse began to dramatically decline in numbers during the middle of the 20th century because it was no longer required for the sort of work that the heavy horse had been bred for in the past. The dwindling numbers of Clydesdales would result in the horse being considered vulnerable in the present day. They're now categorized as being at risk. Number 12. The Percheron Horse Breed 
Originating in the French former province of Le Perche in northern France, it is believed that the modern-day Percheron horse is descended from breeds that were used as battle horses that carried knights of war. In the 17th century, this region would become the place to go to for the strongest horses, and the breeds of Le Perche became famous for their extraordinary power and desirability. It was in the century that followed that the Percheron, as it's known today, would be developed. All of the Percheron in existence today can be traced back to a horse named Jean Leblanc from the 19th century. This creates a sort of horsey aristocracy. The horses that developed after this were particularly prized by the French army. Later in the 19th century, the Percheron would then be taken to the United States. A dreadful and dangerous journey for anyone, horses didn't end up faring too well. The first attempt to transport a total of eight horses would be a disaster, resulting in only two surviving the voyage. They were, luckily enough, a male and a female. And I guess they must have fallen in love because they had some babies, which then created the first of the American Percheron on record. Later on, they figured out how to keep horses alive on the journey to America and then began to import the breed in the thousands. The powerful Percheron became the horse of choice for farmers and transportation well into the 20th century. That was until Skynet took, I mean, technology took over and the Percheron would no longer be the main attraction. <laughs> I've got so many of these. Number 11, the Suffolk Punch breed Developed in Suffolk, <laughs> duh, on the east coast of the UK, the Suffolk Punch horse was created to be powerful enough to plow the heavy clay soil of the region. Strong and docile, these heavy horses were ideal farm workers. The smallest of all the draft horses, the Suffolk Punch, are always chestnut in color, having short legs and great strength. That makes an ideal combination for farming. But unlike other breeds, the Suffolk Punch was not developed by army generals or even posh landowners. They weren't created to be magnificent warriors, and they weren't fancy hunting horses. Real land workers and farmers cared for and grew these beautiful beasts to support them in the fields. Nowadays, the breed is more likely to be seen at a county fair and amongst devoted breeders who still keep these gentle giants to show and for historic reenactments as well. They're even on the UK's rare breeds list under the at-risk category. Less famous than other draft horses, the Suffolk Punch has become an open secret amongst draft horse breeders in the United States and they're punching above their weight in the show pony world. Number 10. The Norwegian Fjord breed. The Viking Warrior's horse of choice. This ancient breed is not only striking looking, it's also one of the oldest breeds of horses in the world, thought to date back over 4,000 years. The dun colored creature is easily recognizable with its bold mane and tail, darker in color than its coat, and often with dark streaks. It's a pretty cool looking horse. For a Viking and probably many other horse riding colonials throughout time, the comfiness of your horse is really important. Spending huge lengths of time in the saddle, the Vikings literally traveled the globe on horseback. It's really difficult to enthusiastically plunder and pillage your way around the world if you have a sore bottom, you know. Oddly enough, one of the characteristics of the Norwegian Fjord horse is that they are, in fact, more comfortable than other breeds. Now, I'm not talking like recliner levels of comfort. <laughs> I mean, it is a horse after all. Marginal gains in the rear end department may have given the Vikings an edge in their invasions. However, the legacy of this choice of horse remains. The Norwegian Fjord breed can be found around the world to this day and is still a great choice for horseback riding. So giddy up. And before we get to number one, what do you think is going to be the top horse on the list? Write it down in the comments below and then come back and let me know if you were correct. Number nine, the Dole Gudbrandsdal breed. Horses have always been very important in Norway's history and culture. What with the difficult terrain and lots of snow, the horse has been a vital part of literal survival in the harsh landscape. 
originating in Norway's Gudbrandsdal Valley. Hope I pronounced that correctly. Dole horses have been around in one form or another since as far back as 800 BC. The Dole is not only a great all-around horse, but one of the things that makes this breed so incredible is that it has especially large lungs. Which is weird, right? But it is these big old breathing kits that make this breed so good at the sort of farm laboring that they're known for. During the Second World War, Norway was invaded and occupied by Nazis. The Dole Gudbrandelsal horse was used widely during the initial battle for Norway. So these horses are kind of like Nazi fighting resistance heroes. Let's learn a teeny bit about languages because it's relevant, I promise. So, modern-day Norwegian, the word for horse is hest. Dolhest is the Norwegian name for this breed. In Old Norse, there were two words for horse. There was hester, meaning stallion, and hros, which meant mare. In fact, that's where the English word horse comes from. I can actually feel my brain growing. How about you? So much horse knowledge. Number 8. The Russian Heavy Draft Breed now, it's actually a really tricky thing to milk a horse. <laughs> what? Milk a horse? As well as being a solid workhorse, the milk of the mares of this particular breed is actually popular as a nutritious beverage in the Russian Federation. The Russian heavy draft is exactly what it sounds like. A heavy draft horse developed in Russia. Well done, Sherlock. Great deduction skills. Developed during the 19th century, this powerful beast of burden has been used for farming, transportation, and also as a high-yielding milk production horse. In parts of Russia, a type of fermented dairy drink, a little like kefir, is produced using mare's or donkey's milk. It's slightly weird sounding to our soda-addled minds, but hang on a minute, it does kind of make sense. In the wilder parts of the vast Russian landscape, food can be scarce, and it was extremely difficult to find before the industrial period. So, traditional foods, including things that happen to be available in remote areas like horses and donkeys, were used for all kinds of daily work and transport, and their milk was also available, so people used it to make kumis. Considered medicinal, kumis is said to be an effective tonic for all that ails you, including tuberculosis, anemia, and even impotence. Not really sure how scientific that research is. And even today, this drink is still an important food source for people in the remote Central Asian steppes, Mongolian people, and many others who live in the extreme Russian territories. The Russian heavy draft is a worker, a vehicle, and a beverage vending machine. Number 7. The Dutch Draft Breed What's this? Another heavy horse, you say? And this one looks like it's wearing four crazy fluffy leg warmers? Super trendy and really, really strong? What a combo! The Dutch Draft Horse is basically a combination of all the big powerful draft horses of Europe. A monster combination, in fact. This horse is a cross between powerful Belgian breeds and the Dutch Zeeland Horse, and the mighty beast is literally purpose-built. And that purpose? to have monster strength. Breeding can be a weird thing. The ability to pick and choose the strengths and style of your horse seems like a sci-fi plot, but that's precisely what breeders do. Often, when it comes to thoroughbred racehorses, the things that are chosen are speed, beauty, and a plan to win races. But in the case of a draft horse, The breeder's trying to select the features of a horse that make it most like a machine. The Dutch draft was created in this way for the sole purpose of becoming the best combination of strength, stamina, and a calm personality. Basically a living, breathing tractor. This horse has pulling power, and that's for sure. Number 6. The American Cream breeds. An all-American draft horse, this magnificent animal knows all the words to the Star-Spangled Banner, bakes apple pies, and is a fanatic about baseball. No, but really, the American Cream is the only draft horse that was actually developed in the United States. In 1911, a stock dealer in Iowa bought a cream-colored mare with a white tail and mane, and it also had unusually amber-colored eyes. 
This small horse would then become the proud mama of many creamed colored foals, leading to breeders developing more and more of these striking animals. The original mare became known, somewhat rudely I think, as Old Granny, the grandmother of the American cream breed. Though popular throughout the 20th century, there are now only about 500 of these rare horses left in the United States. These beauties are mostly seen pulling carriages, or at county shows, probably twirling batons and enthusiastically waving the stars and stripes. Number 5. The Jutland Horse Breed now I admit, it's probably not the best breed in the world, however the little Jutland Draft Horse is the one used by the Carlsberg Brewery in Copenhagen, to this day pulling its drays around the city. Since Carlsberg started producing beer in 1847, they've used horsepower to transport their barrels. When they opened back then, the Carlsberg Brewery Company employed more than 300 horses a variety of different breeds originally, but now they have just seven little Jutland horses on the books. In the 1920s, the brewery was using about 200 Jutland horses. It was far and away the horse of choice for this company from its early days, and when there began to be concerns over the future of the breed, that's when they decided to go all in with the Jutland. exclusively keeping and using this old Danish horse for their transport. As time would go on and technology would take over, the brewery maintained a small number of the horses to transport beer in the original way, by horse and cart, throughout the streets of Copenhagen. They're still seen today, representing the Carlsberg Company at fairs and festivals and can even be seen in the city streets. The horses have become a tourist attraction as well, drawing visitors to the Carlsberg stables at the brewery. So the Jutland, although a more rare breed than it used to be, is still an incredibly important part of this particular part of life in Denmark. You could even say they're the main event. <laughs> Number 4. The Boulonnais Horse breed. This versatile equine has been through a whole bunch of different uses in its life some less fun for the horse than others. Used in the more traditional sense, like a lot of big draft horses, they lugged stuff around. Then in the, in the 17th century, it had the whiffy task of transporting fish around France, a job so valued by the food-loving French that it's still celebrated today at the Route de Poisson, a 300-kilometer horse and cart race along the old fish transport route. The Boulonnais horse also helped to build the city of Paris, not so much as a bricklayer or an architect, but the heavy-duty horse was used to pull great blocks of stone around the city. <laughs> this same super strength would then be used by the French army in the First World War to pull huge artillery weapons and deliver supplies to the front line. Now you'd think that the mighty Boulonnais could catch a break after being so helpful to humans throughout the ages, but no. When people discovered just how tasty this breed of horse is, they then became the number one choice for horse meat in France. This being its main use during the second half of the 20th century, French people enjoyed chowing down on the poor old Boulonnais for a few decades until eating ponies began losing its popularity and the numbers of these horses actually dwindled to a measly 1,000 over all of Europe. Now that's just tough to swallow. Number 3. The Italian Heavy Draft Horse Rain in your excitement, because here comes another heavy draft horse. Similar to many other European breeds of working draft horses, the Italian Heavy Draft is strong and powerful, but this one's always immaculately dressed. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, Italian fashion. Anyway, the Italian Heavy Draft is also known as the Rapid Heavy Draft, which is because, you guessed it, it's been bred to be a faster draft horse. In the late 19th century, breeders originally began to develop the horse from Brandbent horses from Belgium and local Italian stock. This would make for a good solid strong horse, but the kind of terrain in Italy meant that the breeders were also after a more agile and faster beast. So these mad scientists, sorry, breeders, would add in a little Percheron and a dash of Boulonnais, not spaghetti Boulonnais, the pony kind, 
But it does sound like a recipe, doesn't it? A base of Brandman, a handful of Italian horse, a tablespoon of Percheron, just a pinch of Boulonnaise? Anyway, the result would become a horse that could perform these sort of agricultural tasks that were unique to the particular Italian landscape. In fact, they're still in use for that purpose today, in areas where it's not really possible or practical to use machinery. And yes, it turns out this breed is also tasty to the horse meat fans of Italy as well. So why the long face? Number two, the Breton horse breed. Now, if you've ever played Red Dead Redemption 2, you've probably heard of the Breton horse, the best horse on level one perhaps, but not much good after that. Anyway, it's actually a real life horse breed, not just a video game one. So saddle up, we're gonna see what's up with this horse. Hailing from Brittany in northern France, the Breton horse is a direct descendant of the horse that was ridden by the Celts. Brittany is actually still a heavily Celtic influenced place, and the Celtic language of Breton is still spoken there to this day. The historic Breton horse would be crossed with faster breeds like Arabians in order to create a breed that was ridden by the Crusaders as they made their bloody campaign across the Mediterranean in the Middle Ages. These days, the Breton is more likely to be found working as a draft horse on small farms or even being used for gathering seaweed along the coast. And yes, much like other European draft horses that we've met so far, this one may also be destined for someone's dinner table. Number one, the spotted draft horse breed. Well, compared to some of the old timers that we've seen, this draft horse is downright a newbie. Only officially recognized in the 1990s. I mean, I've got t-shirts that are older than that. The spotted draft horse comes in many different colors, a veritable rainbow. The spotted draft horse is kind of unusual in that it can be developed from any draft horse. It doesn't have to be specific, and it can have all kinds of different sorts of coloring, called pinto. When it's any color in patches with areas of white, the word pinto comes from Spanish, meaning spotted or dappled. So imagine a dappled horse, if you will. As well as being bred to be strong, either to be workers or to be show horses pulling in prizes in plenty of contests, these guys are also bred to have different colorings and sorts of markings. A snazzier breed than those boring old plain coats, maybe? As well as looking the business, these big beasts are especially versatile. They've been built that way after all, and they're just as often chosen for riding as they are docile and willing as they are chosen to pull a plow or prettify a parade. So what else could you really ask for? Well, there you go. Thanks for your unbridled enthusiasm along the way. Did you enjoy the globe trotting tour with some of these horses of the world? I'm sure you probably learned something, didn't you? Let me know all about it in the comments below. Make sure you check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.